Hi friends, my name is Atul Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to append data to text file in SSIS. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is how we can append the data to an existing file in SSIS. So recently I got a question from Radha Patel and she asked that I have a text file and I want to append the data to it. So how I can do that? So let's jump to the demo. At the moment on my SQL Server 2019 instance, I got two databases, Canada database which contains 1000 records and the India database which also contains 1000 records. So let me select the data from this particular table. You can see that it contains 1000 records and the country is Canada. The ID starts from 1 to 1000. So this is kind of data we have in the Canada database and if I show you the data in the India database. So similar kind of data we have in India but the country name is India. So that's the change. Otherwise the ID is the same. It is start from ID and it goes up to 1000. Okay. So now what I want is that I want to first export data from one database table into a CSV file and I want to append the data from the India database as well to the same file. So at the end of the SSIS package, there should be 2000 records in the file. Okay. And first I will show you how I can append the data into a file without header and then I will show you the challenge that you will face while exporting the data to a file with a header information. So I will be exporting the data to the D files location. So at the moment I don't have any file and maybe I can create a blank file here and I will call it as all countries dot CSV. This will be the file that will contain the final data how I can select the database name and table name so that I can dynamically change it. So we can write like something this select Canada as database name comma Canada as table name and then union and then India as database name India as table name. Maybe I can share this query with you. I can also share the create table statement for Canada table and India table and maybe you can use it in your SSIS package if you want. Okay so this will be the query that will run. So in the first column it will return the database name and in the second column it will return the table name. So we will make that the OLEDB connection dynamic in the SSIS package so that it can change first time it can change for the Canada database and then second time it can change for the India database. Okay. So let me open the SSIS package. So this is my blank SSIS package that I will be using today and because we need to loop through multiple databases so we will be using the for each loop ADU enumerator and let's create few variables here. So the first variable I will call is as objdb. So this will be of object type which will hold the information, the result set that you saw. So th this result set it will hold the this particular object variable. Now the another variable I will create is database name that will hold the database name at a particular iteration and the data type will be string. The default value I can give is Canada here and another variable I can create is table name okay and uh, the data type will be a string of course and the name will be Canada as well because we have Canada table in the Canada database. So this is good. Now let me drag and drop and execute SQL task into the control flow window so that I can just fetch the data against which I can just loop through. So get database names and I can configure this one. create a new connection here. I already have a connection to the India database and maybe let me drop this one create a new connection here and select the server name from here. Ok paste the server name and then I can select the Canada database click ok. Ok. Now under SQL statement I can copy this particular query and I can paste it here click ok. Now under result set we will select the full result set and then under result set I will add a new row here and I will change it to 0 and the variable type will be object because multiple rows can only be assigned to an object variable. Now I can just drag and drop the for each loop container and I can connect the execute SQL task with the for each loop container and then I can configure the for each loop container here. Inside the for each loop container uh, under collection we will select the ADO enumerator and now under ADU object source you will select the object variable. Now if you go to the variable mappings so the first variable that is written is database name and the second one is the table name. So we will select the first variable as database name 
and second variable is table name now this is good I can click OK now I can just use a data flow task here to export the data from SQL server to a text file so in the first iteration the file will be created and now in the second iteration the data will be appended to the same file okay so I can just configure the data flow task and because we are going to fetch the data from a SQL server table so we will use a OLEDB source now one of the important thing is that you can just make the connection dynamic so you can right click on the OLEDB connection go to the properties now inside the expressions if you open it so there is a database initial catalog property initial catalog means database so inside the initial catalog you can assign the value from the database name variable okay in the iteration as soon as the value of the Canada will change to India so the connection will change to India database on the SQL server instance so right now for example if it is connected to the Canada then it will be connected to the India okay so this is how it will work now you can click on ok ok so we have made the connection dynamic you can see an FX sign before it which means that the connection is dynamic and now you can configure the OLEDB source in the data access mode you can select table name or view name variable you know that we have defined a variable table name so we will select the table name variable to fetch the name of the table so at the moment the value in the table name is Canada so it will select the Canada data and as soon as the value will change to India or something else then it will select that particular table so you can click on columns to make sure that all columns are selected here and then you can click on OK now we will be exporting the data to a CSV file so we can just drag and draw the flat file destination and then we can connect the OLEDB source with the flat file destination now you can configure the flat file destination here click new click ok you can name anything the flat file connection manager name I will call it as flat file and then you can just browse the file that we created initially so we can select all countries.csv file which is of size 0 KB and you can click on open at the moment I will export the data to the file without the header information so you can simply click on preview and uh, you can click on ok you can click on mappings so all the input columns have been mapped with the destination columns and then you can click ok so the SSS package has been configured and there is a slight change that you need to do to make it working but let me just show you like running the package like what it will do if I run it now so what it will do the default behavior is that if you saw that the loop ran two times but still you will find only 1000 records in the destination file so let me show you the file so the file should contain 1000 records so you can see that it contains 1000 lines and there is no header information so this is the default behavior that when you export the data to a particular file even if you write multiple times so every time it actually overwrite the data so if you want to append the data then what you need to do you need to right click on the flat file destination click on edit and there is an option here overwrite data in the file so you can uncheck this one now it will append the data okay so you can click on ok and now let me just delete this particular file from here and now you can rerun the SSIS package so this time the data should be appended and there should be 2000 records in the destination file so let me open the file again and now you can see that there are 2000 lines and let me show you how. so you can see here we got the 2000 lines exported so the last records country is India for all these records and initially it is for Canada okay so we got 2000 records exported so if you check the first line so there is no header information in this particular file and if you want the data to be exported to a file with the header information then there is a slight challenge in that particular task and I will show you how we can export the data to a file with the header information okay so this particular task is done so to export the data to the file with the header information we actually need to first of all delete this particular file and now let me just delete this particular file and delete the flat file destination as well and create an empty file again all countries dot csv I can use the flat file destination here I can connect it here uncheck this one new flat file connection and then I can just browse the file that I created now you can click on mappings so the all input columns have been mapped with the destination columns so you can click ok and now you can rerun the SSIS package again
so the package ran fine and let me show you the data in the file again so if you see now we got 2002 lines okay so in the first row we got the header information but if I show you the 1000 record so after exporting the 1000 record it actually added the header information again so that is the issue that when we do this like this so it append the header information again so if you are appending the data from multiple databases from multiple tables so it will append the header information again so this should not be done okay so this is the issue that I was talking about so how we can fix this particular thing so to handle this particular thing that if you want to export the data and want to append into a file with the header information then what we need to do we need to declare a variable here and I will call the variable as CNT and uh, we need to actually create two data flow tasks so this is the one data flow task which is exporting the data to the header information file so I will call it as file with header information okay so this is the connection with the header information and now let me make another connection here and I will call this data flow task as with header okay and uh, I will call it as without header okay so what we will do in the first iteration the file will be exported to a flat file connection with the header information and in second iteration it will be exported to a file without header information so this is how we need to do so I can just insert this particular data flow task inside the for each loop container and then what I can do I can just drag and drop a data flow task just for its kind of supporting data flow task it won't do anything okay we can connect this first, first data flow task and with the header one and I can write some code here double click on it and select the expression and constraints and I will write here if cnt equal to 0 so this is for the first iteration so if the cnt value will be 0 it means that we need to write the data with the header information okay and the second case will be that if the cnt value is not equal to 0 it means that we will write into the file without header information okay so this is how it will work and as soon as this particular thing is done we will increase the value of cnt the cnt plus 1 so this is how we can do this so you can just connect all this one logical or okay and i will configure this one increase cnt value and i can just configure this one uh, we can make a connection to the any database it won't make any difference and in the expressions we can select the SQL statement source click here put a double quote and write select double quote plus plus double quote and I can just drag and drop the variable here cnt and then I can end the double quote as well now I need to type class is to a string because it's of type integer dt underscore wstr comma 12 and what I will do I will append the value with plus 1 okay so this is what we will do so we will increase the value of cnt with cnt plus 1 and then we will assign this particular value with the result set of a single row and then click on the result set add a new record here change the result set name to 0 and the variable name cnt is already selected so click on ok now with header data flow task is already configured and now we need to configure the without header data flow task so we can double click on it now first of all we need to delete this flat file destination and use a new flat file destination again and now I can just configure the flat file destination again I can just uncheck this one click new to create a new flat file connection click ok file without header information okay and then I need to actually delete this particular file because it contains the header information so I need to create a new file again countries.csv so this is kind of some pain otherwise it will work so this is how actually I do it and I'm not sure if there is an, another way so we will select this file again click open and now we don't need to click on this one so we will uncheck this option column names in the first data row so data will be exported here click ok and you can make sure that the mapping is good and you can click ok uh, so this is the connection file without header information this is file with header information so in the data flow task without header 
we will select this particular connection file without header so this is good and now in the with header we will select this information this connection manager file with header information so this is fine now we have configured the SSS package successfully and now if you see this file is empty as of now so let me rerun the SSS package so if you see the first time it went to this one with header and return the data with the header information and now second time it went to the without header file so even if you have 1000 or 10,000 tables to export so this package will work fine because in the first iteration the value of the CNT will be zero so it will go to the with header and then we will increase the value of CNT with CNT plus one okay CNT plus one and that's why it will go to this particular data flow task every other time with every other iteration okay now let me open the CSV file and check the data in this file so if you see now we got 2001 lines okay because the first line is the header information then we got the 1000 records okay and after 1000 records of Canada it is started inserting the data for India with the one okay and there is no header information in between okay so I think this is how you can export the data you can actually append the data to an existing file and with header information or without header information thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on also that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much